G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Uh, today I'm going through the third and final in my series of Wingnut Wings Are They Worth It videos. Are they really that good? So I've pretty much finished the build of my Fokker E4 and um, yeah, I'm going to go through it with you now and then at the end give you a bit of a summation of the sort of closing stages of the build. And I'm busy working on the cowling at the moment, the engine cowling. It's one of the trickier parts of the build because it needs this really beautiful, uh, let me show you, it needs this really beautiful kind of polished aluminium swirly effect that's going to be really tricky to replicate. But before it even gets to that, I'm busy cutting off unnecessary bits. So if you see here, I'm meant to be getting rid of these moulded on flash guards and replacing them with photo etched ones. Sounds pretty straightforward. But unfortunately, to remove these moulded on flash guards, I've started sanding away. Let's try and get some focus. To remove these moulded on flash guards, I've started sanding away, and I've bloody well gone and destroyed all the detail up the back of the engine cowling here. So you can see all along here, it's got this really nice little sort of tiny ridge detail that goes along the bottom. And then here, I've sanded it flat. Bugger. So, if you haven't already seen my first two parts of this series, I'm loving the build, but I'm finding it... Oh, Nerve-wracking is the word that I keep coming back to. It's amazing, it's detailed, it's incredible, but there's so many ways you can stuff things up. And I've been relatively lucky so far. But this is the first time I've gone... Oh, Shivers. I'm not going to swear, but this is the first time that I don't know how I'm going to get that detail back. You can see it here, raised detail, and here it's just obliterated. So, I don't know. I'm going to keep going, but I don't think there's much I can do there. I'm just going to have to suck that up. Well, here it is all sanded off. Now I just need to go through and actually polish that up and make it look okay. I'm hoping against hope that one of the machine guns goes over the top of that. One there, one there. So I'm hoping it hides the worst of that stuff up. But yeah, it, it's an example of uh, it's an example of an advanced modeling technique. It's an example of a piece that Wingnut Wings says, yeah, you can do this, no problems. And it's just perhaps unnecessarily foolhardy. I would have loved to have just had a piece that didn't have these to sand off. I get that there are you know manufacturing constraints. I I really get that, but it's just there's a with this Wingnut Wings kit, and you know, once again, like I said in my first episode, this is based on my experience of one. This is a sample size of one, and I'm about you know, a third, a half the way through. But it's perhaps sometimes unnecessarily complex. You know, the results are fantastic, but there are just traps for, you know, traps for young players on the way, traps for the unwary, and I fell into one there. Just, yeah. I'm just going to complain. <laughs> no, it's a great kit, but unnecessarily complex sometimes. Anyway, the detail's fantastic. Let's keep going. I'm going to polish this up and make it look better. Well, I've got all my parts ready for the turned metal aluminium effect. Um, I must say again that replacing the moulded on flash guards with these was a pain in the ass. Super glue got everywhere. It's just unnecessary. It would have been easier. I mean, this looks great, but it would have been easier and less troublesome by a long shot to just mould those on. For the for the difference in the actual finished product, I don't know that it was worth it. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to paint these black and then start the aluminium effect, which is a whole other kettle of fish. It's going to be challenging. I have been busy doing this turned aluminium effect on the cowling, and wow, it's time consuming. It's really time consuming. I'll show you a couple of reference photos here, and you can see the effect I'm trying to achieve. So yes, it's very time consuming. I'm going to do a separate video detailing how to do this. Um, it's very much a focal point of the kit, so I'm trying to put a lot of effort into it. 
but wow, since it takes a long time. It really does. But the effect is quite worth it, I think. Let's try and get some focus. There we go. Yeah, the effect is definitely worth it. So I'll keep on going. Here are the tyres from the kit. So I've cut them from the sprue, and you can see yeah, there's a little tiny piece there and there where I've had to sand it down. But you could pretty much get away with not sanding them at all. You know, normally when you buy an injection moulded plastic kit, the wheels have a sanding line, a, a, a seam line around the edge. I've done it on this one because, let's get some focus, because I thought, you know, there's the tiniest, tiniest bit visible. So on this one I haven't done it, and hopefully my camera's up to the task. Like it's, it's minute, seriously. On another kit, I would not bother. But on this one, I'm being hypercritical, hypercritical here. There's like the tiniest, tiniest seam. You can hardly even see it. That's how hypercritical I'm being. The camera's struggling to pick it up. But it's there, ever so slight. Ever, ever, ever so slight. Um, but, you know, on another kit, I wouldn't even bother. On this one, I'm giving it the gentlest sand just to get rid of it, trying to avoid any flat spots, because that's the last thing I want. But look at these little tyre valves. I love it. And that's hidden away. Once you put the covers on the wheels, you can't see it, but you know it's there. Uh, that's a nice detail. A very nice detail. I thought I'd try painting one with and one without sanding, and here I have been able to capture. You can see the little tiny seam, but my goodness, it's so small. So that's the one with the seam. So I'm going to have to go back upstairs and respray, uh, re sand that down because I thought maybe I can get away with it. But no, you can definitely see it there. But it's tiny. I wanted to share with you what the machine guns have come up like because it's lovely. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. Oh, and I dropped it. Um, yeah, here's our machine guns. Focus, okay. Here's our machine guns. So, they're just a little work of art. I'm tremendously impressed with this. It's got a little tiny clock there on the bar that controls the two machine guns. You can see the bullets. You can see the sort of canvasy holder thing that contains them when they're done, when the shells are finished. It's just lovely. There's a little tiny seam down the bottom there. Don't look at that. But yeah, the barrels themselves and the cooling jackets are just a pleasure to work on. I've just noticed a tiny, 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 look at the size of it, with a little tiny hair at the bottom there. I'll fix that. But yeah. I love it. Now that I've finished painting all the cowlings, I'm at the stage of putting things together. Um, I also have my machine guns that I was showing you earlier. Um, I've come, so I've come to the stage of putting things together, as I said, and I've hit one problem, and it's not, is it a problem? Problem's too strong a word, but it's frustrating. So all this beautiful detail inside here, this air intake in particular, so this little round knobbly thing, this beautiful you know, I don't even know what it is, I think it's some kind of oil thing, but this tank here at the front, all this beautiful detail down the side of the cowling here and in the side of the cockpit, watch what happens to that when I put the machine guns in. It's completely hidden. There's no way to see that. And once I put the actual full cowling on, it's even worse. So, you know it's there. I know it's there. You know it's there, because you've come on the journey with me. But, ah, uh, just, that air intake in particular, and that tank that I just showed you, what's the point? Unless you're going to somehow open it up and take cowlings off and display it fully open, which is possible, and, you know, I admire Wingnut Wings for having that as an option, but, seriously, how many modelers are going to do that? One in fifty? Maybe? One in a hundred, maybe? Um, it's just... It's, it's ball-breaking detail that is now going to be covered up. Perhaps it's just this model in particular, because the Fokker 4, the Fokker E4, is a very covered-up cockpit. You know, there are some that are much more open. But, once that's all in there, all that gorgeous detail is gone. Like, I'm struggling to even light it. Um, yeah. It's... it's
it's not obvious from the instructions, but this piece in particular, all this detail here, covering all that detail there, just kills me. I get it, but I don't think it's necessary. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. Um, since I last showed you the fuselage, I've been subtly weathering it. It is quite subtle, um, but there's more to come. But you can see some tonal gradations there. And I have finished all of my cowling pieces, so got things like the engine ready with the cowling. Um, it's a little tricky to get this to fit, but that is possibly just my building as opposed to the kit. It's finicky. Um, better on camera than not on camera. Uh, it's finicky, definitely. But that is possibly due to me and the painting and the way I've put it together. So I'm really struggling to get that to fit perfectly, that sort of circular front firewall there. So I'm going to keep going with this, start locking it all together, and I'll show you how it's coming along. One thing I do love about this kit is the wings. Why do I love the wings? Because they're one piece wings. There's none of this stuffing about putting two separate halves, top and bottom surface of a wing together. I love that! It is always so hard to fix the seam along the leading edge and the trailing edge of a wing. So, along the edge, better if I can show you, along the back edge here and along the leading edge here. When you put two separate wing halves together, a top and a bottom half, always a problem trying to fix seams along that edge there. On this, whoop, knock my light around. Um, on this, you don't have that problem. There's a tiny bit of cleanup, and obviously, once you remove parts from the sprue, there'll be a bit of cleanup there, but it's nothing compared to normal. And there's like the tiniest seam along the leading edge, and there's the tiniest, tiniest bit of flash here. But Oh, that's nothing compared to a kit that I'm used to, making an airplane kit. This is happy days. Um, it also has all the little... Oh, focus! Oh. That's better. Um, it also has all the little mounting points for the rigging already pre-drilled. Zoom in and show you those. So, gotta love that. So yes, the wings, I'm very happy with. And the detail's really beautiful too, you know, the, the edging that you can see there where the struts inside the fabric are. It's pretty convincing to me. Um, also, the, the walkway at the top here, the walkway detail is pretty good. Unlike my camera. Let's see if we can get that. It's really tricky to show you, but it's very fine grill detail. Just got to get the light just right. There, he's starting to capture it now. I mean, that's pretty fine. There's the little grill. So, that's the walkway up to the cockpit. On any other kit, that would be photo etch or, you know, just not really textured. On this, it is. So, the wings, I'm very chuffed with. That's beautiful attention to detail. It's crazy. There's, there's this kind of crazy obsessive detail, and then there's beautiful detail. And this is one of the beautiful detail bits. Nice one, wing nut wings. I'm just about to paint the rudder, and I just have to point this out before I paint it. If you hold it up to the light, it's semi-transparent. That is pretty fine moulding there. I'm, I'm impressed. Suitably impressed. That's thin. I wanted to show you where I'm at with the wings. So, spray painted them uh, with an airbrush, and I've also detailed them with a slightly darker colour. So, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it looks suitably blotchy to me. It's got enough you know, tonal variation. Sorry, squeaky table. It's got enough tonal variation to make me happy. And um, I've also outlined the ribs with a darker colour. So all I did was take my standard colour, which is uh, Tamiya XF22, I think, RLM Grey, which is recommended in the instructions for the kit. And I've just added equal amount of black to it. So sort of two drops of grey, two drops of black thinned it and then sprayed really, really low PSI 
and really fine, uh, fine lines using the airbrush. And I feel happy with that. It's like I said, it's got enough tonal variation to me to look interesting. Once it's got a bit of weathering and some decals and everything, it's going to look good. I think I'm happy. Yeah, I didn't want something that looked too plain, so I feel that that's got enough going on, but not too much. Yeah, there you go. I'm currently sticking all the cowling bits, all the aluminium bits, again, to the fuselage. And I just have to point out the fit of these little pieces here. So these pieces, there's one on either side, and they go in here. And ugh, it's tricky to do. I'm not gluing it yet, I'm just dry fitting it, but it's pretty impressive. That's a really complicated curve and it fits like a charm. I am impressed by that. I won't deny that. Okay, we're in the closing stages of building the plane here and I'm blown away. So I just did a little test fit. This is the rudders at the back here and it's wobbly. Look, check this out. Wobble, wobble. It, it's very, very fragile. That's me rotating it slightly. It's very, very fragile. These are the two little tabs. This is the little tiny hole that they slot into. I'll try and show it to you properly. Yeah, well. There, two little tiny holes that it sort of slots into at the back there. And I thought, it's going to be a nightmare. There's no way this is going to fit first go. I have deliberately... Focus. I've deliberately scraped the paint off these two bits here because... I heard a podcast, if you haven't listened to it before, On The Bench Podcast, check it out, it's, um, it's an Australian modelling, scale modelling podcast, really rate it, and um, they had an interview with the managing director of Wing Nut Wings, and they said to him, oh, oh we heard that you only, you, know, you design pieces to be put together without paint on, and the guy said, well, yeah, because glue is better for plastic, not for paint, if you glue paint, it's only as thick as it's only as strong as a bond between glue and paint. If you glue plastic to plastic, it's a stronger bond. And I thought, that's kind of ridiculous, but I'm going to try it here anyway. Totally expecting this to be an absolute nightmare to put together. And watch this, it just goes together so, so cleanly. It's crazy. <laughs> Having said that, look at that. Just slots in there. Happy as Larry. That's it. It's in there. I was expecting that to be a nightmare, and it's perfect, and it holds, and I love it. Wingnut Wings Engineering, it's pretty good. And here it is, mostly complete. So when I say mostly, there are still some things to do. So at the moment, it's coated in a gloss varnish, because I've still got a fair bit of weathering to do. You'll also note that the propeller is not completed yet. Um, going to be doing that as a separate video, a how to paint wooden propellers video. Um, and you'll also notice I haven't done any of the rigging. That is a separate video that I'm going to be producing um, coming very, very soon, just as soon as I get around to actually building and doing all the rigging, which is not a quick task. So both of those will be separate videos. Um, you'll also notice I haven't put the windscreen on yet because I'm waiting to finish weathering it, then do a final matte coat, and I don't want any of that getting on the windscreen. But, this is the final result. So, it's come a long way since you saw it last. And I'm happy with it. Um, this model is not going to win any contests. There are a few finicky little things that I've stuffed up along the way. Um, some of those, definitely my fault. Like the bit on the engine cowling there, um, that I covered in an earlier video. And some of them were slight issues with the kit. The main thing... Oh, there's my partner sneezing downstairs. Um, the main thing that would be a sort of last minute gripe here would be the decals. And I could have masked and painted these crosses. They're fairly simple. You know, there's not really any complicated shapes there. But as I wanted to give a review of the whole Wing Nut Wings experience, I wanted to use the kit decals and see what they were like. So, I mean, they're beautiful decals. The, the printing is lovely. But they're very thick. 
So, and again, it's a, it's a gloss finish. It's not going to be gloss on the final result. I'm hoping that my camera can pick this up. Two coats of Mr. Mark Softer, or Mr. Mark Softener, um, to try and get it to settle over these wing ridges, has started to degrade the the decals quite severely. And I just didn't trust doing any further. So there are some little bubbles there. You might be able to catch them here. There. There are some little bubbles I just can't get rid of. And I don't want to push my luck because you can see here where it's starting to degrade and it's just going to fall apart soon. So, yeah, a couple of bubbles on the wings equals I'm not winning any competitions with this baby. And that's fine. A um, little tiny bit of silvering around the lettering there. You can see it if I hold it in the right light. And you can also see some bubbles under that. And look, that may partly be me, but I'm just not willing to risk it. I'm hoping that a final matte coat is going to hide the worst of those. And I'll try and push them out a little bit more too on the wings. That's it. The decals are beautiful and incredibly detailed. So all these little details along the edge here. Can we get focus? Oh, struggling. There we go. All those, I don't even know what that says, but I'm assuming it's, you know, don't lift here kind of stuff. They're beautiful. Really detailed. Um, the compass on the wing here. You know, that's a thing of beauty. That's impressive. I'm happy with that. I love it. Um, final fit of everything. Everything went together remarkably well. Um, the cowling was a bit of an issue, as I mentioned in my earlier section in this video. Um, but, fit is so good that I'm going to leave this piece free to come off so that you can show off the interior if you so choose to. Yeah, it's so beautiful, I don't want to hide that away. And the fit on that is nice enough that when it's on there, I don't feel it it lacks anything. I don't feel it looks wrong, as opposed to gluing it in place. Um, I haven't quite glued this in yet, um, because I'm waiting to finish weathering and turning it upside down to stick those final fiddly details in place. Um, yeah, look, overall, I really enjoyed building this kit. It was a great introduction to wingnut wings, and I wholeheartedly recommend them. Um, I will certainly build more in the future. I didn't think I was going to say that when I first started this video, this series of videos. Um, I really didn't expect to come away saying that. I was pretty much ready to say, yeah, it's all the Emperor's new clothes, blah, blah, blah. But no, it was. The engineering is just a thing of beauty. It's a little over-engineered at times, but when the pieces just go together so nicely, I have to be impressed. I have to tip my hat to Wingnut Wings. It's bloody lovely. Um, it is a little over complicated and a little over detailed. Um, maybe that's part of its charm. I don't know. I'll show you the underneath as well while I'm chatting away here. So again, you can again see where those wing decals are just starting to degrade. And I need to still put lots of castor oil stains along the bottom here and really grubby it up. But, I mean, it's a lovely kit. The engine is just incredible. The engine is really amazing. Love that. And the cowling, it was a pain in the bum to do, but it really sets the kit apart as, you know, something special. So I'm happy with it. I mean, it's not finished yet. I'm still going to do, as I said, the propeller and the rigging. But um, for your basic, this is what you get in the kit. I loved it. It was really good. Um, I will build another. The plastic, I didn't have a single piece sh shatter on me. I didn't have a single piece fracture or snap. And that, to me, when you're looking at such detailed stuff like these in particular, watch it break now. That's so detailed and it's so delicate. Um, these little tiny pieces here, you know, there was a lot of cleanup involved for little tags that are deliberately built there. There was tiny, tiny bits of flash, but overall, the engineering 
was incredible and not a single piece of plastic broke so whatever their plastic chemistry is it's black magic and I respect it and salute it um I loved it I'll build another one I guess that pretty much answers my question of wing not wings are they really that good yes begrudgingly they are if you have one in your stash and you've been nervous about starting it just get stuck in just do it it's fun to build it's a pleasure it's nerve-wracking and maybe this you know shows me to be the masochist that I am but it was a pleasure to build it's just it is I'll go out on a limb here and say it, it's probably the best engineered kit I've ever built that's a big call but I'll say it um, yeah I've answered my own question they're really that good there are some downsides be prepared to not compromise be prepared to challenge yourself and put in more time and effort than you normally would um, and the end results speak for themselves I'm really impressed with this um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was good. That's my final verdict. So come back soon and I'll show you how I paint the propeller, how I do the rigging and turnbuckles and all that kind of fiddly stuff, and I'll show you a final reveal when it's all finally weathered and done and not glossy and slick like this. But yeah, it was lovely. It was worth it. I liked it. Thanks, guys. Um, special thanks again to Hobby Link Japan for providing the kit to me. It really was a special thing to be offered to review. Um, thanks, guys. If you are tempted by it or any other Wingnut Wings, check them out. Their prices are good. Here I am spruiking for them, but no, respect. They, you know, I've been a customer for a while and they're good. And um, yeah, come back soon, visit my channel, see what's happening. If you've got any questions, please comment below. But otherwise, Check you next time, guys. See ya.